The politics lead the White House today attacking House Democrats for their handling or mishandling of Attorney General William Barr's House testimony that never happened. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders zeroing in on House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler. I, I think what we're seeing from Chairman Nadler is that uh, he's incapable of holding power. If he and his committee aren't capable of actually asking the Attorney General questions themselves and need to staff that out, it seems like a pretty pathetic uh, moment for the chairman of that committee. All right, and uh, let's chew over this. It does seem like it's getting a little hot from the White House podium. I mean, I, I get partisan attacks, and they're certainly all over Democrats, Republicans, but there was a time when the White House press secretary was restrained. I, I don't even remember that time at this point, Jake. <laughs> uh, but no, it, you never really saw the White House press secretary get as viscerally attacking sitting lawmakers. Uh, usually the, the, language, the language was there, but it wasn't as harsh. So yeah, but it, it kind of goes, that's this administration, right? I mean, it, it's, it's, bra it's bare knuckles. It, it has been, and it, it comes from the top. And we should also mention that, you know, the Trump-Jerry Nadler beef oh, yeah. goes yeah. back <laughs> decades. Decades, yeah. Uh, sure. Because Jerry Nadler blocked a project that Donald right. Trump wanted right. in New York. So, also, like, I mean, of course it does, because it's like the most Trumpian thing. It, it is. It is. <laughs> it's, it's so on brand. So, I mean, we, we, that, that should also, that also, I think, is a piece of this, that the disdain the president feels for Jerry Nadler is is special. It's old. Now, the White House says, uh, Mary Catherine, that they're just <laughs> punching back. But, but, I mean, this is Sarah Sanders using a, a similar kind of insult to describe House Democrats trying to get the president's tax returns. I don't think Congress, particularly not this group of congressmen and women, are smart enough to look through the thousands of pages that I would assume that President Trump's taxes will be. So they're pathetic and they're stupid. Look, the White House doesn't <laughs> listen to me on messaging. I think we've established that <laughs> many, many, many times over. Um, yeah, if I were them, I would just stick to look like these are the top lines of the Mueller report. Uh, Barr has been transparent and given you most of the Mueller report. It's hardly redacted, even though there was a giant freak out for a week about it not being being like heavily re redacted. Furthermore, the idea that this three week period, they set some sort of narrative uh, that was false is not true because polling doesn't show any of that. And it's all at your disposal. Please impeach at will. That would, right. that, that, that's I would just say that over and over and over again <laughs> instead of insulting people um, because all of that's true. Yeah, but she has an audience of one, right? She yes. is playing to right. the president, right? She, I mean, that's why it was very unusual. Remember, it was, I guess last weekend everything happened so fast that she went up on stage during the White House Correspondents' Dinner when the president was did his hour and a half screed in Wisconsin, and Sarah Sanders goes went to the podium uh, or went to the stage and you know was hailed, even though in the report it's very clear she lied. So, I mean, clearly she is more interested in making sure that the president is happy, which is part of the white reason she's there, because Sean Spicer couldn't do the gig, right? It's not about, and this is what I think is yet one more way that this president has really soiled the office of the presidency. I mean, as a communications person, right, when you come to Washington, being the White House press secretary, that is like the golden job. That is the job you want. You're not, just, you're not supposed to be just speaking for the president. You're supposed to be speaking to the American people, right? Trying to be that conduit between the press and the presidency. And instead, now it's just turned into just another grudge match throwing mud. And, and, and Sarah Murray, take a listen uh, to William Barr talking about, he was asked if uh, Don McGahn, the former White House counsel, was going to uh, be allowed to testify before Congress if, or if the president was going to try to invoke uh, executive privilege. And here's what Attorney General Barr had to say about that. Do you have any objections? Can you think of an objection of why Don McGahn shouldn't come and testify before this committee about his experience? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I think that he's, he, he, he's a close advisor to the president. Never, and the president never uh, exerted executive privilege. Excuse me? He may have already waived his No, we haven't waived executive privilege. We. <laughs> we haven't waived executive privilege. That's interesting, because normally it would be the president hasn't waived executive privilege. Right, so if you're, you know, of the belief that Bill Barr is now acting more like the president's personal attorney, there's your fodder to back it up, rather than acting like the attorney general, you know, for, for the United States. And I think, you know, when we talk about 
the various messaging fights that we're in, because this is really just a fight about 2020 at this point. I think you're right that, you know, Democrats can point to things like that and say, look it, look at how corrupt they are. They're all in the same bucket. You have, you know, him handpicking attorney generals who will stand up for the president's interests, not the interests of this country. I think where Democrats get themselves into trouble and could is if you point to things like what Sarah Sanders is saying and you say, she's only talking to an audience of one. She's not only talking to an audience of one anymore. She's talking to an audience of everyone in this country who thinks that the Democrats went too far, that they're continuing to go too far, that the Mueller report cleared the president of criminal wrongdoing, and it's time to move on. All right. Some other news today. Stephen Moore, President Trump's once likely choice for the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, has withdrawn himself from consideration. President Trump tweeted the news today, calling Moore, quote, a great pro-growth econ economist and a truly fine person. Moore, a one-time CNN analyst, has been dogged by a series of disparaging comments he made in the past about women which were uncovered by CNN's K-File team. Moore's confirmation was clearly in jeopardy. In a statement to President Trump, Moore wrote, quote, the unrelenting attacks on my character have become untenable for me and my family, unquote. Moore's decision comes on the heels, of course, of Herman Cain also pulling out of contention for the Federal Reserve Board last month after people on both sides of the aisle in the Senate had questions about him.